Welcome to the Business, Faith, and Family podcast. I believe there is one important aspect of life we oftentimes overlook and undervalue, which is simply the gift of becoming. As we are all at different stages and timetables of our lives, becoming better individuals, business owners, parents, friends, even better spouses should be our meaning for true success. Meanwhile, allowing our faith to keep us anchored while balancing it all is truly one of life's greatest gifts. And your journey to becoming more in tune to that gift starts right now on the Business, Faith, and Family Show with me, your BFF, Christina Harris. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to Business, Faith, and Family Podcast here with your host, Christina Harris. I have here with me Professor Pooch, Professor Pooch. And, you know, I can say a lot about Professor Pooch, um, but first off, 50 years in the music industry is pretty impressive. Want to say hi to everyone, Professor Pooch? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Professor Pooch. Yes. Welcome to my world. <laughs> and then um, added 30 years in film. Yep. Well, I got into film by accident, even though I knew that for some reason I was going to get into film when I was older. I didn't know why. Some just told me when I'm older, I'll probably want to get into film. And then, uh, but I started where music videos I was in, like after the 80s, was 80 something. And I would go to a movie set, they'd take one look at me. And folks, if you, if you look at me on my site or whatever, look me, look me up or whatever, uh, you'll see the way I look. And they just go to makeup, go to makeup. <laughs> so I got used to it. And then uh, all of a sudden, around 2010, somewhere around there, uh, one of the uh, the film directors, one of the bigger film directors in the city of Philadelphia, uh, went to another director and said, I found God! I found God! <laughs> so my first role going into regular indie films, I played God. I love it. And then I played uh, four wizards. If you take a look at my picture, folks, you'll see why. I <laughs> pulled everything from Dumbledore to whatever. And then I played like six mental patients. I played... I just did my, on last Sunday, my 13th homeless person, or 14th, I didn't lost count. So I basically went from God to homeless. <laughs> Big difference. Oh, yeah. Huge believe difference. Me, believe me. I love it. You know, I love the fact that you are the go-to person for an area that is, um, most people will consider intimidating to venture upon, or you will end up trusting people that, you know, really exploit our talents and gift and keep a lot of, but you are the go-to person for the business aspect, the contract writing of just not just operating in your talent or your gift, whether that's in music or film or both, but you are the one that really helps people, um, secure that portion of their life too. So today's show is basically saying protecting your business will protect your life. How did that become a passion for you? What did you go through to really... All right. <laughs> I, I'll make a very long story very short. But back in the late 60s, I was a recording artist with the majors. And I had written this song for another artist uh, who was coming out on Columbia Records. And, uh, okay, but I noticed back then they had 45 records. And the, they actually put the writers' names under the artists' names on the old vinyl and stuff like that I noticed my name wasn't on there mm. so I decided I have three choices either quit the business continually getting screwed or learn the business mm. and please folks learn the business you're in you should and uh, what happened was I stayed you know and just learned from all my surroundings there was no music business colleges or anything back then you know, I learned from my surroundings and I had a great mentor in uh, the 1970s. His name was uh, Eugene McDaniels, who produced Gladys Knight, Roberta Flack, people like that. And he was my second producer. He produced me. And he just taught me a lot because he had gotten really hurt with the majors back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And he showed me about he was one of the first independent producers. So I learned from him, you know, the way it really was, yes. not the, the bull that I was running into. And then uh, starting around 1980, people started coming to me. 
And I found that I like the behind the scenes stuff better than I like the in front of the scenes stuff going all over mm -hmm. the place. And I, I'm more of a behind the scenes person. I'm more, it's just me. It's my personality. Mm -hmm. It's who I am. I'm more comfortable. I, I always call myself the perfect number two man, <laughs> you know, in other words, let somebody else be out there mm -hmm. running everything, you know. But what happened was, so uh, I found out I like behind the scenes. Then in 1991, or 1990, 91, it's another lifetime ago here, folks. Um, the Art Institute of Philadelphia asked me to come in and speak to the, they were starting a music business program. So they asked me to speak, and then they heard me speak, and they said, do you want to develop and teach some of our courses? <laughs> well, and I said, well, look, I, I'll see if I like teaching, you know, to, to classes and mm -hmm. stuff, especially the part about getting up at 8 o'clock, well, <laughs> being in class at 8 o'clock in the morning. But I developed their entertainment law class and wow. taught that, music publishing, artist management, uh, entertainment business management. And uh, I stayed there for the length of the program, basically teaching all those students. And then in 2004, I'm skipping because it's just way too much. Uh, 2004, I came, I call it, I came out from behind the closet because I was so behind the scenes there, I found that I got tired of getting people out of messes. So let's prevent people from getting into yes. messes in the first place. Yes. So uh, what has happened, some of the major stars that I was working with start dying. And, you know, it was just getting crazy, just crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. So now, I mean, I've been thrilled since 2004, somewhere around there. I just work with mostly ND. Yeah, of course, if my clients have to deal with the majors, I deal with them. But I deal with anything creative, business, or legal. I'm not a technical person. If it gets into heavy technology, mm -hmm. don't look at me, you know. I mean, I, I have a knowledge of it, but I, I, I wouldn't use me, you know. But, uh, yeah, basically, I consider myself like a troubleshooter, a problem solver. Mm. Or they say, well, what's your title? Yeah, The best title for me is janitor because I like fill holes. <laughs> you know, if somebody that. needs something mm -hmm. in the business or creative of mm -hmm. music and, and or legal uh, contracts. I'm not a lawyer, folks. I've taught a lot of lawyers, trained a lot, and a lot of lawyers hire me for the odd stuff. You know, anything odd I get, you know, <laughs> it's just like when I'm acting, I play characters, I you know, that. I'm just comfortable like that, you mm. know, just being me. That's awesome. I love it. And, you know, as we talk about how to, why is it important to protect your business? Um, mm. I want to talk about that a little bit more. There's so many people who I've seen, they just jump out there. They're waiting for that, that one call that's going to change everything. But I notice a lot of people don't prepare for that one call adequately. You can develop the gift, the skill, the talent, but you also have to protect that. So why is protecting your business or even knowing the business aspect so important in the industry? Well, you know, if you're asking to get screwed, mm -hmm. you know, ripped off, whatever terminology you want to. Uh, you, you got to know what's going on. Matter of fact, nowadays... No investor, legitimate manager, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, record company is going to deal with you unless you treat what you're doing as a business. They want you to have a business up and running. That means you have that LLC, you're protected. And if you're more than one person, like a group or a band, you have a partnership mm -hmm. agreement because they don't want any problems. They have to answer to their bottom line investors mm -hmm. and stuff, you know you know, within months. So they want you all ready and prepared. So if you're just going to think you're going to become a star and sitting back, uh, nobody's going to, you know, you can have the most talent in the world, but if nobody ever hears about you, you're wasting mm -hmm. your time. But uh, with the labels and the way the music industry nowadays is, you have to make it on your own and then they'll come to you. First of all, if you go to them and they somehow take you, you're going to get ripped off because man, I'm not going to go into the whole stories. I, I could write books on um, horror stories. <laughs> and like Spotify and Pandora, and they say, well, you know, the artists are getting paid. Of course not. The record companies are getting paid, mm -hmm. but they're not passing it down to the artists. 
they're keeping the money. Yeah. I mean, if you want to have fun, look up Sony WikiLeaks, okay? <laughs> and you will see what happens. Wow. But they're starting to straighten out because they realize the indie is now up to 38% of sales. And that's more than any one major. Oh, wow. So, I mean, you know, you better keep reining me in. Yeah, I can talk so, five yes. Hours on no, time. this is great because, you know, <laughs> I, I, again, I, too often too, I see how people, you never, just even as a common sense perspective, like you said, you want to be ready before that opportunity really presents itself. And you never want to give someone else who may have a motive that opportunity to open up a business for you, write contracts for you. That's something like you said, you Rut should row. have a, yes. <laughs> yes, you should have a attorney on all those things who's going to advocate for your best interests. The way I do it is like with my clients, you get your LLC, especially if you own anything like a house or a car equipment, you better protect yourself. Yes. And what you want to do is I have my people signing to their own companies, like uh, they sign as an artist to their record company and as a songwriter to their publishing company. And they own both. First of all, it keeps away the riffraff mm. who's trying to rip you off because they say, ooh, these guys are stuck together. Yes. And it's, and it, but it attracts people to say, oh, he's got his stuff together. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you want to be a business up and running. And they're going to think more of you at that point. You know, if you're just going to sit back and say, I'm a star, make me rich, it's not going to happen. Yes. Or you're going to get ripped off, one or the other. Yes. You know, one thing that a lot of the industry is not responsible for, and I always tell, and that's any industry, whether it's film, acting, or um, film, or music, or even f leaks and things like that we always hear how people come into all this money because of their <laughs> talent mm -hmm. and they have no clue they end up going broke in a few years mismanagement things like that you know I always tell people um, regardless of whatever amount of money you have even if it's just a small amount you should become a pro at managing at any level of what's in your hand and for me, things like that is very important, you know, and um, even in my own life, m my child, I have a life insurance policy. Okay. And my only prayer is, Lord, let me be around long enough so I can teach him about money management and the wisdom of stewarding over wealth. Um, because otherwise, he'll come into something and have it learned the most important aspect of oh, it. Oh, they spend it right away. People right away. Money. Well, here's a, and like it's when I write partnership agreements, they'll notice I don't allow all of it to be distributed. I said, if it's all distributed every time, there's nothing there running the company. Yes. What about if you need equipment or a new computer or this or that? you got to be, you know, you got to have something in the bank. That's why, well, Gene McDaniels is a great uh, example. He had a, a money manager who was a legitimate one. Be real careful, po folks. You, you want them helping you, but not taking over your money. That's good. And he was, if he won a new car or something like that, he would say, how am I this month? <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> I mean, he had a load of money, but he, he knew to play it safe. He was not going to get, you know, in trouble like yes. with that. But having that whole business together is just so important in education. And you, could, you should know about what you doing you know because even if you say well i'll get a manager first of all no manager is going to touch you unless you're a good one yeah a real right. legitimate right. one high-end one it's not going to touch you until you have your stuff together yeah, you know it, it's just to say uh see and the, people see this the whole thing of diy do it yourself mm. to me diy do it yourself equals hobby Mm. nobody knows everything. I mean, I know a ton because I've been in the industry 50 years. I better know it by now. But I don't know everything. And even if you know a lot, you need the time to do that. everything. Good. I mean, you know, I need somebody to do my website kind of thing. Mm. You know, I look at that stuff and I go, huh? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and you need those kinds of things. So, you know, and it's just like another thing is when you, it's good to have a business person, but you, you got to make sure if you're not going to learn the business, at least learn enough mm. to know if somebody else really knows the business. 
I, I get asked to come in sometimes and just grill future managers, whatever they are. And with today's internet, you can look them up. I felt that. You know what I mean? And by the way, I tell people, you know, even me, you know, look at, put Professor Pooch in Google and see if you see anything negative or anything like that. You know, whoever you're working with, you can check them out. Yes, you're you so know? right. You know, if there's all good or all bad or there's nothing, and if there's nothing, it's very strange nowadays. That is, the internet that is very good. That's folks. true. <laughs> that is so true. You're absolutely right about that, you know. And I know there are times even in my own life where I have to... Um, accountability even as a business owner yourself and no matter like you said no matter how much you know you always realize it's a lot more I don't know you know the more you know the more you realize how much you don't know but accountability even over yourself is is great and that's a healthy way of just you know just making sure that you are um keeping your own self in, in order and your business and things like that and that's why you know people like you are and it's so important to just the the maintenance and the growth of the business too. So great. We have um, how to protect your business. You want to establish it. Get your LLC, your partnership. Formation is very important. And that's what you do as well, right? Well, the, to be honest with you, the LLC, I give them the, if they're in Pennsylvania, yeah, of course. I just, I have a form. I just give it to them and say, here, fill it out, pay mm-hmm. the state. You know, I, yeah. I don't charge for everything. I don't get into that stuff. Or if you really want to go to a lawyer, but they shouldn't charge you a lot. Yeah. I think that I've seen some strange ones. Where I somebody have to. charged somebody eighteen hundred dollars for an LLC they could have done for themselves. It's real easy for like and it would have been a hundred and twenty dollars. Exactly. So that's ridiculous. Yes, I've seen that. Don't waste money on mm-hmm. stuff, you know. So I'll just say, you know, here's a form, fill it out, send it in. That's that. Yep. You know? yeah. And that's and that's why it's like you said, the formation of an LLC is very inexpensive. I would rather spend that extra money on the formation of some contracts and things like that that will better protect the the art of the business opposed to the formation of it, you know? Oh, yeah. So you're you, absolutely you right. Both of them. You know, you, the formation and then have, you know, you need to protect yourself. That's what your LLC is, but you should also protect yourself from other people. Also, with the contracts to yourself. And people say, well, why do I sign to myself? Well, what you're doing is turning over ownership to your own company. Mm. This way, if somebody sues somebody, they're not taking your house and everything else like that. You know, it's like, let's say Dolly Parton is going to do a gig in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. just picking out of a hat. And her bus, tour bus breaks down. If that's what she is. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Her tour bus breaks down, but she had signed her thing. She didn't sign a Dolly Parton, as Dolly Parton LLC or whatever her Mm -hmm. actual legal thing is. You're protected, you know, Mm -hmm. and and people don't understand that, you know, it's just, ugh. Yes, you're you're absolutely right. And, you know, I think about, too, how, um, like you said, for example, when you, it's important to separate the business from the person. And actually, when you sign, um, I think about how, you know how we see those big companies on the news, something goes wrong. It's easier for them to simply fire the CEO, yeah. you know, or, or have them step down, you know, but it don't disturb the business kind of, you know. Well, if I fired myself, I'd have to hire myself back to Because <laughs> I'm just me. Exactly. <laughs> So, you know, um, I'm just curious, um, how did you get the name Professor Pooch? Okay. I've been Pooch since I was a kid. I don't remember how exactly, but somewhere is I like dogs or something. I was real young. I mean, we're talking a long time ago, folks. And then when I started teaching at the Art Institute, they started calling me Professor Pooch. And it stuck. It sounds like a rapper or something like that, you know? So that's how it started, right? That's how it started. And the name stuck. And I go, okay, you know, fun. Now, you have, I, I've met a lot of people. Yeah. And I must say, you have a very humble spirit. Mm-hmm. And have you always been that way? Or was there, you know, a transition in life kind of thing? Well, First of all, look, folks, I was a kid and I was a teenager and I, you know, got into trouble like everybody else. Mm -hmm. We're all, you know, we try to reach our limits and everything Mm -hmm. like that. But uh, 
I was never really, I never got, I was never arrested or anything like that. But I mean, I would say stupid things. I've learned tact in my older age. <laughs> you know, I, I was known for the awful truth and I would say some stupid stuff to people, you know. Uh, things like that, of course, you know, I had to learn. I don't think I re reached any form of maturity till I was about 28. I'm just this rock and roller kid mm -hmm. with a band, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. And, you know, and I just, uh, it was... I like myself now much better than I did back then. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. I, I agree with you 100%. Well, and, and the humble part is, look, I, I look at myself as a unique character. Mm. But I don't think I'm better than anybody else or worse than anybody else. I'm just me. What it is with life, it's so funny. People say, you know, she's fat, she's this, this. And that. What they're doing is judging and comparing. Everything just is, mm -hmm. unless you have something to compare it to. So I just is. Yes. I'm just me. I don't try to be like anybody mm -hmm. else. And when I, matter of fact, I just put on Facebook the other day, you know, I see these producers and stuff trying to change people to fit their stuff. No, no. What I do when I work with an artist is bring out who they really mm -hmm. are. Because God made all of us unique. It's just too many people want to, be like the Joneses, be like this, be like that. In fact, I put another thing in actually the next day or something like that. Well, the point is, don't let anybody try to change you. I mean, and I'm sure everybody in the arts has gotten, nobody ever makes it. And usually what it is, is the person saying that, first of all, is judging you. Mm, and that's good. you shouldn't judge, you know, anybody, they shouldn't judge you. You know, don't worry about it. everything in life is an opinion. Mm -hmm. Whatever anybody says is an opinion. You know, and people knocking you, they could be either lazy, feel little of themselves, so they like to knock other people down. You know, there's different reasons. Maybe they're not as, or they don't think there is talent. Everybody has talent. Everybody has an imagination, but it, it's one of those inner senses. You have to learn to exercise it and use it. Yes. There's inner senses as well as our, you know, you know, touch, feel, you know, mm -hmm. you know, sight, hearing. You know, they're the outer senses, but there's inner senses like perception yes. and imagination, you know, and willpower and things like that. They're inner and you gotta exercise them just like a muscle. Yes, that's very true. And 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 you know, I love that you said that because that's one of my um, favorite things that I've recently come to discover. I think what happens is during that um, stage of our life where we're to identify ourselves, um, there's another stage of confidence. And you have to be confident and secure in who you are. Otherwise, you will quickly be molded into the image of whoever is interested in you. Change your hair this color. Don't talk this way. Don't rap this way. Don't dance this way. And it's, it's, what's interesting is the one thing that makes you different than all those other people in the audition room is most times the most challenging thing that you're challenged on the change about yourself. I can imagine how many people said, hey, I think you should cut your hair, dye it, do this, oh, do God. that. <laughs> I've heard cut my hair for so many years. And for 50 years, my hair has been in and out of style about 30 times. <laughs> you know what I mean? But this is just who I am. It's just my beard was shorter most of the time. But to the other four, I just said, wait a minute. No, I'm a longer beard person. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't just did it. And that was that. Yes. You know, it's just who I am. It's yes. Just, and you, you need to learn to accept yourself for who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, just be the best. Yes. You, there you, you can go. Be. Yes. Yes. You and, know, and, you know, I think there's a special thing that has to happen. Um, once you acquire that confidence and just security being yourself is in this industry, in this world, you're going to have to brand just that. You're going to have to be your biggest fan. You're going to have to make other people want to adapt to your perspective now, you know. And um, we actually, one of the young men at the program where we met, and I remember him saying how as a DJ, he was questioning if he should do this and that. And the things that he was questioning was all the things that made him different, you know. And 
I think we started to tread down that road of telling him, you're going to have to create a new audience that is going to appreciate the art in you. Sometimes an audience that was created for one audience, you're going to have to create your own brand, your own audience and um, have that. Those are the people you should, you know, really focus on. Someone that's going to appreciate you as an artist. You know, it's like, you know, when I meet somebody, in effect, I could put it this way. I hope you like me, you know, you know, and if you don't, fine. That's up to you, you know, change the channel. Yeah. There you know, you go. it's like, look, you have to be real. It's got to come from your heart. It's like a performer on a stage. You, you've got to be real. Let it come from your heart. And, it, you know, they ha- you have to have the feeling, look, you know, and not be care about, well, they like me. Well, they yes. just... At yep. that point, you're thinking of yourself instead of your audience. Mm, that's good. You know what I'm saying? It's just like uh, people say, oh, I get so nervous. Yeah, but if you're nervous, this is going to sound strange. But you're actually being selfish because you're thinking of yourself. Are they going to like me? You know, your focus should be on your audience. That's so good. That's so good. And that's so true. And if we look at it, wouldn't you focus on yourself? That's the key there because the audience will change. The audience will always change. Ten years ago, the people that I interacted with were different people opposed to now, you know? Of course. So you're right. So that's some awesome advice. Focus on yourself. And if you're nervous or anxious, that's because you... Nerves are simply energy. Mm. Put that energy to use to do it. Have a better performance. Use that energy. I mean, it used to be funny. I would get too relaxed for some sessions. So I'd start drinking my tea or something, try to get a little edge on. <laughs> to, it's energy, folks. Mm-hmm. You know, use mm-hmm. it. You know, you know. It's nerves can be good, actually. Look, everything that's ever been created has a quote unquote good and bad side. Mm-hmm. You know, an up or a down. There's nothing that does not have an opposite. And the one thing you have a choice of in your life is your attitude. Mm. And that is, you can look at the good side or the bad side. Well, this doesn't have a good side. Well, sometimes God wants to teach you a lesson because maybe you've been treating people bad and they're, mm. he's trying to teach you a lesson, you know, or something like that. I mean, there's a reason, you know, and and people say, well, you know, I'm tr- I want to do this thing different, but the, everybody's trying to change me. Look, I, I, the great example is Edison, whatever, that uh, he created the light bulb. He made a thousand mistakes before he got there. Mm. And too many people don't make enough mistakes. That's good. They're afraid mm. of failure. And the point is you never fail unless you quit. Yes. And if you don't, if you don't quit, you haven't failed. When you have a failure, quote unquote, at something... It's just giving you a course direction. Believe me, I went through a lot of course directions. And, you know, I thank God this is, I turned out doing what I really should have been doing in the first place. It's just, Mm. I'm a a mentor, a teacher. I love helping people. Yes. You know, and God gave me nudges, you know, and you learn, you know. (laughs) You know, it's funny you said that. Um, This week was challenging for me um, in my faith, I'll say. And um, I said something. I said, you know, I thank God that he's not a genie because genie, a genie's job is to simply grant the wish, not to necessarily tell you whether it's good or bad for you. You know, he's just do his job. He grants it. And um, what did he always say? Be, be careful what you, what wish, you wish for. for. <laughs> you might just get it. <laughs> you said it. Exactly. And then, and similarly to what you said, it's interesting how, you know, we find ourselves, even with the detours, back on the path. Back on the path. And the lessons or the failures is just to teach us along the way. You know, and I know, um, I believe that we have so much work to do as people in our own person that um, we're forever going to be changing. Like you said, our attitudes, our thought process. I remember when I first opened up my first business, Professor Peach, it was simply for profit and gain. I didn't care who I exploited. I didn't care about the um, ethnical code of the business, anything. It was at that time I had a need and I had a good idea. And it wasn't until I had to go through experiences 
that made me become extra sensitive to what type of business I opened, how I ran it. And I've learned that not every good idea, not every idea is a good idea, you know? So but that's... It's good to, but the, the important mm -hmm. thing is you went out and tried it. You yes. did something. You didn't just sit and dream, mm -hmm. you know? You found that and you learned from it. From it, it. you said it. And as long as you learn something from it, it's not a failure because that? you could just adjust yourself and you stuff like that. that. You have a book that's called mm -hmm. God Didn't Create Alarm Clocks. I'm so interested. How'd you come up with the title? I'll be honest with you. I'll, it just came through me. Mm. It's like, you know, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> I get asked uh, different types of I like to do Q&As more than I like to do lectures. And somebody says, Pooch, what do you do about when you get writer's block? And I said, I don't believe in it. You know, there's no such thing as writer's block. The point is, don't force yourself to try to write a song. You never will. Just lean back and let it come through you. Something just came through from mm. God or whomever. Mm wherever, whatever, it came through and I was told, keep it. God didn't create alarm clocks. And mm -hmm. the funny part is, I found five different meanings of why that's important, you know, and for all different things. First of all, an entrepreneur, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you can't go by the normal clock. That's true. That's okay? good. That's you, good. You have to do what you have to do when you have to do it. There's times... Well, I think I was joking. I don't remember if I told you I was joking about it. But on, no, it wasn't. It was somebody else. But I'm a music business person. And for some reason, I work better in the middle of the night. <clears throat> so I normally go to bed between 6 and 8 a.m. But I'm also in the film industry where I had to be on the set Sunday at 8 a.m. And people say, well, why don't you go to sleep earlier? And it doesn't work that way. My body clock says, you know, Six, you know, my body clock says, look, folks, you know, and most people are cool with me. They realize, here, Pooch, you're not on set right now. Go take a nap in your car or something, <laughs> you know, but I'm luckily I, and, and that's another thing about the God didn't create alarm clock is you'll find out that people work too hard during the day and then sleep too long at night a lot of the mm. times. And what they, by the way, they found out with heart attacks, a lot of times it's in the eighth hour of sleep. It just, your body goes too far to rest. I have way more energy if I sleep five hours than if I sleep, if I sleep every seven hours, I don't want to get up the rest of the day. It's just me. Now, look, mm -hmm. everybody's different. Mm -hmm. You have to do what, you know, like, my thing is if, if I get this thought, Pooch, you better go to sleep. I listen. Okay. You know what I, I mean? That. It's like somebody's watching out for I me. You know, go to sleep. But what I like to do is like five hours, and if I could take a nap. Luckily, okay. I'm my own boss. It's a yep. great thing it about is. being <laughs> an entrepreneur. I make a rotten employee, okay? <laughs> and my thing is that when I work with people, I don't care what time of day, as long as it gets done. Yes. I, I'm not there to punch clocks and all, you know, unless something's necessary. Well, my clients need something by a certain time, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, and you go like, that's yes, right. I, I've noticed that you're very professional. You're very prompt. And um, I'll give you my definition of professional is respect. Mm. You respect yourself, you respect others, you respect your art. You know, it's respect. That's awesome. It's like, you know, I was supposed to be here at four. I made sure I was here by four. You know, mm. things like that. It's just. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, but you're fine, you know. You have to, my, the whole world <laughs> has ADD nowadays, okay? At least, okay? So people are all over the place jumping, and I'm like that too. Technology has done that to us. <laughs> yes, it you is. Know? It surely has. Nobody has an attention span. Do you feel like giving us this information, helping people, and um, just really seeing people operate at the capacity that they are to are supposed to be and protect it is now your, like your life's legacy now. What would you at the stage of life now where you are? What do you feel like is your greatest give back? Information. Yes. But and also 
learning how to use the information. Mm. You can know everything in the world, but if you don't know how to use it, that's where creativity comes in. Okay. okay? And look, people say, well, I'm not a critic. Everybody is, was born creative. Look at the tiny kids when they're really, they're all over the place. They do, they're creative. Mm -hmm. We've taken a lot of that out of, a lot of the schools yes. have taken it out of, you know, look here, da, 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 you know, and you stop being your, yourself and you have to exercise the creativity. So my thing is, yeah, I have the knowledge. It's from experience, a lot of it. But I know how to use it and adjust mm. it because I'm not afraid. Even with contracts. I, people say, why are you doing contracts? Well, I like contracts because you can be creative mm, with them. Look at that. It's just, why can't both sides be happy? How about that? That's awesome. And I've worked as a mediator 99% of the time. There's never a problem as long as somebody wants an answer. I, I did run into one case where somebody just really wanted to hurt somebody. Mm. And I walked out. And yeah. That was that. Because I saw it. was just, yep. you know, I'm sorry. That's that. Look at that. You know, it, it should be fair to both sides. You're so right. You know, you quoted here. Um, it says, in business, you are creating what hopefully turns out to be a family-like experience. you remember that? Uh. Well, it is a family. Like, if you're working with a team, it's like a family. Mm. Mm. You know, it should be. I feel like I'm part of a, a ton of families. Yeah. You know, my I do my part. Everybody's got to do their yes. part. You know what I mean? I oh, That's one of the things that drove me crazy when I was teaching at the Art Institute. Now, I didn't work in those kinds of things, but they're like film teachers and stuff were complaining because they put five together in a group five together in a group and they found out one person was doing all the other all the work and the other four is sitting back yeah <laughs> you know no it's a team yes. or it doesn't work yeah. which i'm going to bring up something very very important mm -hmm. and that is the word communication mm. and Communic a lack of communication, miscommunication, non-communication, malcommunication, whatever you want to call it, it, it's so important to communicate with everybody, everything. Don't keep stuff to yourself. You everybody's got to be in on everything. Mm. So and it's got to be clear communication. I see more businesses and more groups and everything screwed up by lack of communication. Yeah. Yeah, you're so right. You're absolutely right about that. You know, um, you have a ton. When I say ton, you have a ton of free information on your website. Yep. Actually, um, all right, my site is professorpooch.com. I'm Professor Pooch on everything. It's just, it's branding, folks. Learn about branding. Yeah. I'm lucky. The way I look, but you see my picture, I'm a walking brand, luckily, which helps <laughs> out a lot. There's a tab on my site that says, Free library. <laughs> Read it, everybody. Oh, and one thing it's going to make you happy, everything I do in, is in text and audio. Look at that. Wow. And it's like my books and courses. I have a whole curriculum, a whole college curriculum. Save people a ton of money in mm. colleges and stuff. People can't pay back their loans. I don't want to get into yeah. that whole thing. But um, all my books and courses are in text and audio. Mm. Wow. Like my whole music business curriculum is over a thousand pages and it's over 30 hours of audio. So, uh, yeah, I believe in that, you know, because some of my clients say, hey, yeah, I was doing my workout and I have my, yeah, exactly. my, my yep. iPod, whatever they were using. <laughs> mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm, I'm learning this stuff while I'm working out. Yes. You know, people say, you know, time while you can learn stuff while you're, work, you know, you're doing so right. something else, you know, whatever. But yeah, um, yeah, there's a lot of free stuff. I never charge to ask answer questions. If Look somebody has a question here, I don't get into mm. all that. I don't want to go through the hassle of keeping track. Uh, what some people do, it's funny. They say, pooch, this has gone too far, and they'll put some money into my PayPal account, <laughs> you know, which is nice. I appreciate it. Exactly. That. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of free stuff. Yeah, if I'm going to guide your career, you know, pooch has got to eat too. Yeah, you know? I think every man is worth their hire. Yeah. Especially when you come with, listen, 50 years that, you know, of experience. It's insane. <laughs> you know, and I always say, we always talk about wisdom, but it doesn't become wisdom until 
the knowledge and what you learn is applied and then it becomes wisdom. You so go. you've been applying all this information and just processing it and you've been accessible and you've been available and you've made all this available for people who um, may not have the funds, you know, or. And even, I mean, yeah, I got to charge for some things, but my prices are so low compared with what they get. And see, I have this other thing too. It, one of my sayings that you, by the way, my God didn't create alarm clocks is basically a ton of my poochisms. <laughs> a lot of these sayings. And uh, I forgot where we were. There goes my ADD. Again. Uh, where were we? Just reel me back a second. No, we were just talking about how um, you provided all this information. Oh, I know for us. what I was going to say. Yep. I believe in giving more in use value than I receive back in cash value. Mm. In other words, more benefits than I receive back. Mm. And that that's the way I just deal my life. Yeah. You know, I and, agree with you. And with keeping it in simple language, that's what I do. Is that I make sure, you know, and I believe also, I'm one of the believers that you should do something nice for at least one person every single day mm, that's and, you know awesome. you could be saying something i mean i'll give out free copies of my book to some guy no can't afford it mm. or this or that mm. and uh you know i just that's just who i am i it, I, I get something out of it i feel good yes you know and when, when they're happy i i'm happy mm. you know kind of thing it's just the way it is <laughs> and you know it takes a while to get there i i and it you know what I feel like it is because I have that gift too, the gift of giving and not just monetarily, but just of your time, of your talent. And we have two types of people sometimes. It's the people who feel like they want to get over in everybody. And you know what? And, and trust me, Professor Pooch, years ago, I used to have that selfish mentality. But I've learned that when I walked a direction, all types of mishaps always happened. The more I felt like I gained by doing things, you know, um, the more it quickly went through my hands like sand. And then now when, you know, God had to teach me about just being a good steward over your life, your attitude and people, the people that come into your life is a blessing. Well, and it's our job to, you know, just make sure that we even handle them with care. So it's funny, like you said, I I find myself giving and it's so rewarding Um and I found that right at the time when you need it the most, favor, you will, you'll harvest favor. I buy properties. There's times when I can't afford this amount, but someone say, don't worry, I'll give it to you for this amount. And I'm like, oh my God. So the, trust me, you well, reap yeah. a harvest of kindness the too. The point is, yes, because <laughs> your mind is at a higher vibration. Yes. If you do... Oh, I use the heavy term evil or yeah. non good things. You have a low vibration. You're only going to attract the same that kind of so people. That is so good. You're right. And look, the world can be described. This is Tesla, not me. But the world can be described as energy, vibration, and frequency. It's just like people wonder if they, you put on 106 point whatever on a radio, you're dialing in a certain frequency. Mm. You expect to get something out of it. Now, there's a way of saying, like, the, the good vibrations is like love, peace, you know, joy, happiness, things like that. And the low things are like, you know, where well, you're hurting people yeah. and stuff. And you're just going to give off that vibration while well, you're attracting that the people so of that you're same right. vibration. That's Whereas right. if you give off peaceful things and good things and stuff, you attract people. It mm. just, you know, the yeah. vibrations meet. They they. They find each other, you know? You're so right. You're absolutely right. What are a few common mistakes that you see people make in the music industry? Just uh, a few. Yep. Give a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, let's look at it over things. Not learning okay. the business and protecting themselves. They make a lot of mistakes. Oh, another thing that I should bring up. Well, first of all, they need to be just as creative on the business end mm. as they are on the artistic end. Hey, look, if you're creative, you're creative. Why can't you be creative business-wise and That's things good. like that? Uh, God, there's just so many. Let's narrow it down. Uh, but there's just... 
you know where to start you know it's just like there's so many things uh oh one of the major things nowadays musicians think that they one of what's use musicians you know they learn their craft how to be you know a great musician and stuff like that but this is 2018 the fans mm -hmm. your potential fans want to grow with you that's good professor <sighs> They want to be part of your family. They want to grow with you. These people that just think they can, and remind me to talk about plan of action. Mm -hmm. uh, these people that just plop things, I call it plop and drop, where they just go from from site to site, buy this, yep. see me here, mm -hmm. pop, 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 and they leave. Mm. That's It turns people off. Wow. The idea is talk to the people, okay. you know, and if they say something, respond mm. to them by the way that ups if you're on facebook that's what makes it go viral more mm. okay is you have to respond up and back like that but you have to treat your fans as special look at that that's nice. and you could do it in easy fun ways it's like people make a music video i say keep the outtakes People love the outtakes, if not more than the if video. That's so good. You're you know, right. you tripped over your wire or your cord. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. know, you're human. They love that. They grow that is so with good. you. Mm. And yes, you've got to work on your instrumentation, but you also got to be there for your fans and treat them as special. That's good. That is so and good. And then if you treat them as special, they're going to treat you as special. Mm. You know. You know. Um, I've learned that relationships are so important. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes we get in these industries and we come in with, you know, um, I'm just going to get what I can get. And I'm going to step on whoever I need to step on to get where I need to be. And I've learned that some of the most lasting, fruitful things in life are building good, healthy relationships with some of the people that you had on along your journey. So you're, that's a great, 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 great person. And you're right. We're in that, we're in that era now where everyone's like, just follow me. You know, I don't care. If you follow <laughs> them, my thing is, if you, I said this on Facebook the other day, if you see the masses all going in one direction, go find your own path. Yes. Because you'll probably be more successful. Otherwise, you're just being like everybody that is else so right. and stuff like yeah. that. And you do have a lot of Facebook, great, great posts. What's your Facebook? Uh, um, where uh, could they find you out on Facebook? Uh, as the friend, oh God, I'm all over the place. Uh, the uh, my main Facebook friends page is Professor Pooch without a space. It's just one word. Gotcha. If you put a space in, you get a, what my quote unquote fan page or whatever it is, business page. But uh, yeah, I'm involved with a lot mm -hmm. of sites. I co-run the Philadelphia Recording Community. Wow. So people that have recording questions about Pro Tools or this mm -hmm. or electronic stuff like that, you know, they can go there. People will get them help with that. Now, I like to be involved with different things, you know, all, all different kinds of. So we talked about the legalism of the business, establishing it. Um, what about the plan of action? Uh, plan of action. Um, I have, and matter of fact, you can find it on a free library. If you scroll down a little past the video of me, you'll see two columns of articles. The top right one is called Professor Pooch's Three-Step Plan of Action. Now, what it is, is your first step, and everybody should follow it in a way. What I do is then personalize it, you know, help them with the personal, because he, he, everybody's different. The first step is getting your business and legal mm -hmm. together. Then with that information and by signing the contracts and stuff like that and the legal stuff, the second step is actually registering everything. So you actually get paid. How about that? You know, people join BMI and ASCAP, which are the performing rights organizations for songwriters. And what will happen is that they think that's enough. No, when you release a song to the public, BMI or ASCAP can't track you if they don't know the name of the song. Mm. So you, for each song, you have to do it. So you, what are you doing? And same thing with the registrations, copyright registrations. And if you did your legal stuff right, the owner of the copyright isn't you. It's your company. Mm. And this is very important. i got to bring this up. It's one of the biggest mistakes people make. They don't understand that the underlying song, the creative part, which is 
you know, the melody, words, if it's just rough, you know, just words or whatever. And then there's the recording. They are totally separate animals and have to be treated differently. Music has two copyrights. There's the song. If you look on his commercial CD, you'll see a circle with the C. That's for the songs. You'll see a circle with the P. It stands for phonogram, but it means the production. It's usually like on a major thing, it'll be circle with the P, Sony Music Group, who owns the recordings. And you got to understand and keep that in mind that the underlying song and the recording are separate. A great example, I'm sure everybody has heard a song in a commercial or a film and say, wait a minute, I know that song, but somebody else is doing it. See, but there's separate copyrights, folks. Mm, you know what I mean? Right. And people have to understand that or that's they're going right. to get ripped off. That's why, you know, and by the way, back to my three-step thing, that's why I basically got everything you need to know to be prepared for everything you want to do in the music industry kind of stuff. Uh, so you have second step is all your registrations with copyrights and oh yeah like the songwriters bmi or ASCAP or whatever and you appear in the united states I, I work worldwide folks um and the recording artist and the record company is a thing called sound exchange but there's different register you need to know about this stuff now the third step is a plan of action of the steps to take which says people this i got to do personally i listen to your music your music's going to tell me a lot. And I got studio monitors, so I'm going to really hear it the way it is. And, I, you know, it should be a step-by-step -step plan of action. Otherwise, you're just throwing stuff to the mm. wind, and you're not going to get any place. This way, boom, boom, boom. Now, I'll tell you a little secret, though. My clients that put the effort in make money. Mm. If they don't put the effort in, they don't make money. It does take effort. You you gotta you don't get something for nothing, and you shouldn't get something for nothing. That's what <laughs> my thing is. If you earn something, you should be paid. Mm. You know, but if you don't earn it, you shouldn't be paid. And I don't want to get into that something because some people, you know, make money by just doing things they shouldn't do. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Now there was one thing too that. Um... You had said once at a previous engagement about the film industry, and you pretty much gave the advice that it's okay to go on um, after indie, you know, opportunities, and not just look for that big Hollywood. Well, know. and and with the music or film, and I'll come back to the film. But the music or film, yeah, you kind of start out on your own and make it to be a business up and running before they touch anything. It's the same with film. You okay. have to start indie. You don't, nobody starts at the top. I don't care if you want to be a manager or late. What, you don't, you have to get there. You know, you, you got to earn it. Okay. And with the film industry, it's the same thing. You got to, you know, I mean, I, I enjoy working just with the indies. I do a ton of films. You know, as an actor and stuff like that. But I also help them with business and legal. But I enjoy it. And by the way, performers and music, the film people need music <laughs> in their films. And everybody and their mother is open to film company. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. between the Netflixes, Apples, mm -hmm. Hulus, and they, there's 10 gazillion. They need content. Mm -hmm. With content, they need sound and music. So one advantage I found out of being an actor, I see the script and I say, hmm, I got a song for there. Wow. If you're a performer, you're a performer. Look at that. That's Why sick. not be an actor? Exactly. You know? And what I do is, I mean, I'm with the film community too. There's free events if you're in Philly. And if you're not in Philly, if there's no event where you are, start one. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. Start that. one and, you know, get together with other filmmakers. And that's another thing that bothers me, too, is what I've seen with musicians won't help another musician. Mm. Or a film person who goes out against, no, mm. the more you help, you're building a community yeah. that's going to then support you. Yeah, you're so right. Mm. And last question. Okay. What's next for Professor Pooch? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of so many things. That's why, you know, I need other people just like every you, you 
I could guide the world. I can't guide myself. You, you get too emotionally mm -hmm. attached. You're too close. But I'm going to be doing more and more videos and films and things. I want to hit the young people before they have a chance to get hurt. That's awesome. I have doing videos and films. I, I do what I call edutainment. Nobody wants to, to just learn. You have to entertain them while you're educating them. You know, mm -hmm. otherwise they just sit on their phones. Yes. And I want to help the younger people. You know, luckily I speak in very simple language. That I will give myself credit for. It's one of my strengths. A 12-year-old will understand what I'm saying. If they get my books and courses, and they're all on mm. the music. Uh, I, all six, I have six books and courses. They're on my site. They're also on Amazon. Just mm. put Professor Pooch, you know, with Amazon, Professor Pooch. They're all up there. On Amazon is uh, the Kindle and print. And... My site is PDF text and audio. audio. That's right. So, and you get both in the text and audio together. But what I'm doing is, I'm all over the place. I mean, I I do what I like to do. If I don't like doing it, people say, "Pooched, what do you do for fun?" Well, I say, "You know, well, I pick up a guitar and I help people and stuff." Well, that's your work. Well, that's my fun too. Mm. Or the, you know, to me, vacation is work. I think it was from raising my kids and you're chasing two kids running in yeah. opposite directions. You need a week of vacation after your vacation. Yeah. But I haven't had like a quote unquote vacation in many, 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 many years ago. Seven days a week. And my only thing is people learn you don't get in touch with me till about after 2 p.m. because I'm a night owl, you know. And I get back to everybody. I'm, you know, they can easily reach me at pooch at professorpooch.com. Just put Professor Pooch at Google. Believe me, there's hundreds of pages on me. So you'll find me somehow, anyhow. Mm. But yeah, pooch at professorpooch.com. I mean, there's books and courses all in simple language and in audio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, things like that. I mean, but my next steps is just. Oh, God, I get too many ideas. Yeah. I need somebody to rein me in sometimes. <laughs> I need my own manager to say, Pooch, when somebody says, Pooch, you only can be in five places at once. <laughs> oh, you know? my God, that's cute. And I have this ridiculous <laughs> amount of energy. And, but um, basically, I, I'm, oh, with my God didn't create alarm clocks, what will be coming out soon is a lot of different things. There's about 150 of my different sayings in there that are listed as sayings. It's about a, a saying a page. Uh, and then I go into more about the saying. Well, a lot of them, unless they stand on their own. But what I want to do is like make like a 365-day calendar where you each day you get a new that's something that's great. going to lift you up. Mm. But it's also going to tell you to watch out for your business. Even God didn't create alarm clocks. A lot of these sayings to help you with your yes. personal life. And it's made to, you learn about yourself, you learn about others, but you also learn about dealing with personal situations and, you know, uh, business situations. Because I, the second section of the book is on business. Okay. And the third is on the legal. But I write it in simple language, folks. Yes. You, yep. You'll be able to understand it. First of all, you shouldn't be writing your own contracts, anyhow. Yes. But uh, so I'm working with different things around my sayings and stuff. I, I always wanted to, um, uh, like one of my sayings in the book, you know, I don't know, people grew, grew up with, now I lay me down to sleep, I pay the Lord, you know, but it's, there's so many sad things. My thing is, now I lay me down to sleep, you know, with happy thoughts I wish mm. to keep until the great day that's in store. I have so much to be grateful for. I love that. And that should be a, a pillowcase. Yeah, <laughs> you know? how about that? So that's see, great. That's what I say every night. And in, the, in the morning, it's, you know, I am healthy, I am strong, and I feel great all day long. And mm. just make it into a mantra and you just keep with it and... You know, today's going to be great. You know, I tell people, you can say that, and then today's going to be great, and then make it great. There you go. There you, I can't, I have to get my copy, and I'm even more <laughs> enthusiastic to have a copy. And where could everyone find you at your email? Yeah, pooch at professorpooch.com. Professorpooch.com, the site. <laughs> uh, I'm all over the place. I, I don't know. <laughs> Just put Professor Pooch at Google. I'm tired. And I'm all over the place. Everything place. comes up. I love and, it. Yeah, yes. it says you'll find articles and this. I do services. I, you know, I guide people's careers. 
requires development. But basically, it's all built about that three-step yes. program that I do because you need a plan of action. Yeah. It's just super duper important. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the, the, I said it's the top right column. On the top left is my state of the music business address for 2018 of what's really happening, mm -hmm. not That's what right. they say is happening. Exactly. That's good. Because otherwise you just get hit by the lobbying firms, mm -hmm. you know, of the major labels, you know, and they're not going to tell you what you really need to know and how to really do it and what's reality mm -hmm. of the industry and how you should treat it. Wow. Well, you know, I want to thank you so very much for coming on to the Business Faith and Family welcome. Show. And I know I've been blessed with just knowing you in this um, small amount of time. And um, I can tell you have a passion for this. And I always say people who have a passion for what it is that they, they teach, they advocate for, those are the people you want to stay connected to. Those are the purpose. people you, yes. You need a purpose. You said it. Those are the ones you can trust with your vision. And I'm so glad that you, like you said, have come from behind to help us out. And I'm so glad that you've made yourself accessible for us. Oh, anytime. I'll be happy to do more. You know, I, like I could speak for years. <laughs> it's, it's just, I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy helping people. You know, mm -hmm. my, my religion basically is I want to go to my grave knowing I never hurt anybody. You know, not on purpose. Never hurt anybody. Just whatever I could do to help people. I love to do it. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's fun to me, you know? Yes. Yes. It's not work. It's, if it was work, I wouldn't do it. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I shouldn't do it. <laughs> well, you guys make sure you um, look up Professor Pooch, support him, get his books, check out the website with all this free information and um, make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Christina Harris, and you've been listening to Business Faith and Family Podcast. Feel free to download and replay this episode, but more importantly, pay it forward by simply sharing it with others. Subscribe to our channel below so you can stay connected for your moments of inspiration. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter under BFFHOST. For your convenience, please hit the links below. Thank you for listening and God bless.